Okay, so we are going to start with lecture 6 uh, of uh, the power plant uh, chapter and uh, in this uh, we are going to look into the environmental impact of power plant. Uh, the power plant as I said before also it is not a very uh, environment friendly system so that is why we need to take care and we have to take a lot of precaution and uh, based on this we are just going to talk about uh, more about this. But uh, let us let's start off with some basic points so before we actually go into the specific uh, pollution caused by a specific kind of thermal power plant mostly it is coal. But uh, if we actually design a thermal power plant uh, the variation in the design actually lies in what kind of fuel we are using ok. So, if we are using different fossil fuels uh, the resources used uh, generally are, are used the resources that are used to heat the water are different right. It might be coal, it might be nuclear and so on. So, such facilities what happens it will convert the heat energy into electrical energy. So, that is the underlying factor here. But certain thermal power plants uh, we, we actually are doing a lot of other things for example, desalination of water which is uh, again not a very environment and friendly system and it is also uh, which is actually uh, uh, used to generate the electrical power ok. So, uh, globally if we consider a fossil fuel uh, the thermal power plants which are actually uh, using fossil fuel produces a large amount of CO2. So, carbon dioxide is definitely not good for the environment and that is produced in a very large amount and that is what we have to look into ok. There are some values um, which uh, under which the emission of carbon dioxide should be there ok. So, the assessment of a possible impact of a proposed project. So, if you are considering a thermal power plant and if you want to assess it, uh, it, it should be actually uh, addressing all these factors, the environmental factor, the social factor and the economic aspects. Okay? Now, this is as per the environmental impact assessment. Uh, okay? So, there are some associations like the International Association of Impact Assessment they will actually uh, determine that what kind of impact the power plant should have so that it can be acceptable. So, the purpose to ensure that decision makers consider the environmental impact when deciding whether or not to proceed with the project. So, uh, before uh, really proceeding with the project uh, looking into a location and uh, analyzing the environmental impact is more important. So, as per this association IAIA the process of uh, identifying, uh, predicting, evaluating and mitigating the biosocial, social and other relevant effects of the development proposals prior to major decision being taken and commitments made. So, before you can really jump into a project any government or private organization they really need to assess these situations. So, what are these? They have to identify, they have to predict, they have to evaluate and mitigate the effect biologically, biophysically, socially and other relevant effects ok. So, we have to look into all these factors. So, if you look into the environmental effect uh, for a coal based uh, power sector during construction phase. So, when the construction is done a large number of land uh, needs to be procured ok. So, there is acquisition of land which comes into the picture. So, this acquisition of land would be in a region where it is uh, uh, not harming the environment ok and other factors are also considered. So, the activities that is being carried out during the construction phase is the change in land use or the site pattern site clearing and so on ok. And then there is civil work the earth has to be moved and the building of structures and the base has to be constructed and so on. But this has obviously got a lot of impact because if the land is not selected properly there will be erosion ok. There will be a loss of biodiversity because eventually you are going to use a lot of water also. So, biodiversity might be lost in the earth, it might be lost in the water body which is nearby and so on. And the quality of the soil will change, they will they might deteriorate day by day and render it unusable in the future ok. And definitely there will be dust and noise pollution because these are all construction sites. So, it is always uh, considered that these kind of thermal power plants are actually constructed far from the city because being in the city there are other dangers also ok. Uh, so, coal is uh, almost exclusively used for electrical generation. So, coal is one of the most widely used uh, 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 source for generating that steam that we need in uh, power plants. But uh, then there is an issue coal is uh, non-renewable in nature. So, there are other issues there. So, if you consider something like coal you have to definitely coal do the coal mining. So, coal mining is definitely something which is restricted uh, with time you cannot actually keep on mining at a particular location 
uh, because uh, they, they, it's, it's done underground. So there has to be a lot of precaution that has to be taken. There has to be safety measures. And in fact, coal mining is also not very safe because coal dusts are also not um, environment friendly or uh, the human being friendly. Okay. So particular surface mining is done in case of coal mining. And this will actually both have long term and short term effects. So it will have an effect on the land including dust, noise and water drainage or runoff. Okay. Now the preparation of coal produces both solid and liquid waste which must be treated and disposed. Okay. So the preparation of coal produces both solid and liquid waste. Okay. So we need to of course dispose them. Okay. Need to treat them because whenever coal is produced they need to be refined to be used in power plants. So that is also a different process altogether. Now when we actually transport coal there is a lot of dust uh, that is being produced. Okay. So the storage produces dust uh, which is actually needs to be controlled and it results in water runoff problem as well. Okay? So these are some of the basic problems which you might visualize very easily. But when there is a power plant uh, emission uh, and if we consider the emission of the different harmful gases in grams per kilowatt hour of power, uh, the different uh, plant types will emit gases like carbon monoxide which is actually not visible by naked eye okay but this is very dangerous okay um, this is more or less transparent we have got the nitrous oxide we have got the sulfur dioxide and we have got carbon dioxide so if you look into the factor so we have the plant type which uses coal if it uses coal it generates a lot of carbon dioxide okay and then the amount of carbon monoxide less in number compared to that of oil and gas okay so oil and gas in fact gas will generate more of carbon di monoxide uh, but uh, carbon dioxide content is maximum in case of coal. Some at some point you might be, we, my, you should remember actually some of these figures. But more importantly, you should know that what are the different kinds of harmful gases that are being emitted by these power plants. Okay, so that is important. So if you look into this um, thermal power based uh, generation, mostly it's coal. Okay, because this is something which is used maximum, and that's why we look into the factor. What are the kinds of pollution that it's getting uh, causes? Uh, when we are talking about coal as a thermal bar, uh, as a material for using in thermal based power generation okay so we have got the air pollution of course okay we have got waste waste generation lot of waste a lot of ash is generated which actually consists of also the minerals or the um, uh, minerals which are actually also getting extracted because if you extract coal from the uh, coal from the ore you are also going to get some kind of unwanted material which are the minerals there is a lot of water consumption okay and then of course emission of mercury which is actually carcinogenic and emission of mercury into the environment is also very harmful and the greenhouse emission because of which there is a lot of uh, temperature change okay so the new thermal uh, power plant of uh, let's say 5 megawatt uh, install capacity will require around 4 million cubic centimeter of water per annum so you see that much amount of water is needed for actually uh, if you design a 500 uh, megawatt install capacity power plant so much of water wastage so definitely it will have a lot of impact on the river and the ground water so in fact you have a power plant which is nearby to a water body and you are extracting that much of water from there uh, it's very difficult to rejuvenate or put it into the ba back into the original state so it is going to affect the biodiversity and uh, the water demand for one through system is 30 to 50 times that of a closed cycle system. So there are two kinds of cycles. There is an open system and then there is a closed system. In a closed system, actually the demand is lesser. In an open system, the demand is more. If you consider an open system, the water is actually sent back into the source and there is more of wastage there and more of loss of biodiversity and so on. So a closed system is used nowadays. The open system is more or less... Uh, um, not practiced okay in fact there are some organization government organization which have even banned use of these okay some governments which are banned so the raw water requirement is considerably less in closed cycle system okay because it requires only five percent of the water requirement of the open cycle system so if open water cycle system needs 100 liter of water comparatively a closed system will need only five liter of water okay so this basically uh, is may make up for losses due to evaporation and blow down so we have to consider a closed system and that's a different system altogether. So this has been taken from uh, Wikipedia. You can actually find this uh, table there. Okay. And then um, let's let's remember one this value. One gallon, we have a G-A-L-L-O-N is approximately 4 liters. It's slightly less than 4 liters. So we consider this as 
4 litre for now. Okay. So, if you look into the values of water consumption, we can see that nuclear power or even if you consider coal or even if something is using a natural gas and of course, hydroelectricity okay, and then um, solar thermal okay, which is actually a hybrid system, all of them requires a lot of water okay, 8, uh, 45 gallon per milliwatt hour okay, I'm sorry, megawatt hour. Then we've got 1100, 1170, 18,000 that's quite high okay. Hydroelectricity is entirely dependent on the amount of water that falls on the turbine and solar power, sol solar thermal which is also a hybrid system will actually require this much. So what we need to do is uh, we have to look into some other alternatives and uh, definitely the organization, the government and the private sector is basically working on developing more power plants based on solar photovoltaic and wind power because the amount of water that is needed is much less in the highest of cases okay just need 33 gallon per megawatt hour wind power needs only one gallon per megawatt hour so you can imagine the system most of this water is in fact used as a cooling system so that means that the consumption is much less wastage is less and it's more environment friendly that is also one of the reasons that why we need to shift to more on the renewable sources of energy so if you consider a typical power plant uh, it will actually emit 90 percent of its mercury into the air and 10 percent on land okay you might be thinking that where does this mercury come from basically when you have coal and there is it's mined these mines will also have some kind of mercury okay some percentage values are there and it, it basically vaporizes and gets discharged into the air which is very harmful so on an average 65 tons of mercury is released into the atmosphere if you consider any typical indian thermal power plant so so if all the indian thermal power plants are considered together rather uh, we will actually have a discharge of 65 tons of mercury into the atmosphere because it uses a lot of coal okay so the, if you consider the heavy metal content of coal it varies according to the geographic region okay uh, but if Indian uh, conditions are considered, this mercury concentration is around 0 0.53 milligram per kg. Okay, and they are not using one kg or two kg. They use lots of tons and tons. Okay, so if you're using so much ton, obviously the amount of mercury which is there is also more. So what happens is when the coal burns in the boiler in order to generate the heat so that the steam can be produced, this mercury gets vaporized because the temperature is very high and this will actually be released as a gas into the atmosphere that's where the mercury comes into the picture there are some other effects uh, if we we'll shift from coal and we focus on some other uh, sources of heat that is oil okay the production the food this fuel burning causes many greenhouse gases so as i said more of carbon monoxide is uh, uh, generated in case of oil and that is more uh, effect uh, harmful to the environment when we consider the greenhouse gases and uh, the other environmental effect impacts associated with the oil production will include something which we call as blowout. Now we have this uh, blowout means when we are actually uh, in the pre-production stage of uh, refining the oil, there is a lot of release of crude oil into the atmosphere, uh, into the environment. Okay, that is blowout. There is, can, can be spilling. Okay, there is always that danger. There is brine disposal. Now, if you have a water content with high uh, salt solution, okay, this is basically called brine. Okay. So that is brine disposal uh, and then the production of hydrogen sulphide. So H2S is also very harmful okay? and in fact it is uh, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it's fatal in nature. Okay? So the transportation of oil, now when the oil is transported there will be involvement of spilling and leak hazards of course these are there okay? and oil refining includes environment effects. So there will be if there is a, obviously there the oil needs to be refined before it can be used and there will be effects like effects such as explosion, there will be fire air emission, noise and of course odor, the small smell is also not very um, healthy. Okay. When we consider something like natural gas, okay, again there are some issues, uh, these are like blowouts, the leaks, hydrocarbon emission will be there that is more in case of natural gas and of course trace metal elements are there because when the hydrocarbons are ex uh, natural gases are extracted, uh, they will have come emission or trace metal present in them. So the treatment of natural gas usually involves uh, air emission and disposal of liquid uh, residual. So when we treat the natural gas, uh, we have to dispose a lot of uh, unwanted uh, dispose, uh, disposal element into the into the nearby environment, okay, which is again not very uh, environment friendly. And when we actually transport, there are again risks of spills and explosions. And finally, when we talk about the nuclear power plant and then there is uranium production, I do not think I have to emphasize on the fact that uh, uranium mining or in fact uh, anything to do with nuclear requires a lot of procedures to be followed because it is most harmful, okay? it is more dangerous uh, 
the chances of getting a carcinogenic disease like uh, cancer is much more when we talk about uh, uranium uh, mining and thorium mining and so on so because there is a lot of radioactive dust which is released uh, when uranium is mined there is mine water seepage if the water gets seeped into the nearby system obviously it's all radioactive in nature it renders the nearby water unusable the protection of water from radioactivity needs to be considered okay and uh, of course the disposal of large quantity of mine waste causes a low, low level radioactivity so uranium treatment must uh, dispose of uh, mill tailing containing toxic metal and chemical waste okay and this is important okay you can read through it is very simple here now the treatment of raw uranium also must deal with radioactive dust releases okay? this is the the enrichment of uranium ore one must account for liquid and gaseous effluent releases and must recycle fission products so mostly when we are talking about nuclear fission it generates a lot of energy so we don't need that much of uranium there okay uh, but the problem is uh, disposing of the nuclear waste is actually which is creates more of a problem okay the transportation obviously involves the accidental hazard which is common in case of coal and oil as well okay but this is more hazardous uh, i hope all of you have uh, seen that symbol of uh, radioactivity okay so whenever there is something is radioactive it's always having this kind of symbols right and then this is uh, probably black okay and this is probably black and this is yellow and so on these kind of symbols are there so uranium or anything which is radioactive in nature is actually extra precaution needs to be taken okay so that's all for today this is the environmental hazard that might actually take place uh, when we are actually thinking of designing or constructing a thermal power plant thank you